Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand for its and gold fundamental and technical analysis. So if you're new, a warm welcome to you and if you're returning, an equally warm welcome to you. And let's get into the uh, economic calendar for this week and uh, what's coming up. And this is from uh, ING and so uh, we'll get into the, uh, the rest of the calendar on trading economics but like I like the uh, I like ING's analysis and so this week we have a strong possibility of the Fed reversing course so markets are increasingly doubtful that the Fed will be able to uh, hike rates much further but that uh, could yet change after the upcoming CPI report this week other another 0.4 percent month-on-month figure on the core CPI uh, more than double the rate required over time to take the US back to 2% year on year inflation target could nudge expectations for the upcoming FOMC meeting higher and we still but they still think the Fed would prefer to raise rates at least once more should financial conditions allow but we they see a strong possibility that it reverses course and cuts rates by 100 basis points later in the year as ever tightening um, sorry ever tighter lending conditions higher borrowing costs weak business sentiment and a deteriorating housing market all weight on growth and rapidly dampen price pressures so um, there's that going on for the um, yeah all eyes are going to be on CPI for the US and Canada uh, the Bank of Canada are widely expected to leave rates unchanged next week having signaled that rates are already likely at the peak the downside risk for global growth in the wake of recent banking turmoil only make it more likely that the next move for the central bank will be an interest rate cut will be the next uh, move is likely and uh, eurozone february uh, data will be key so for the eurozone it is an important week to get a sense of how gdp has developed over the first quarter and one of the things about data you know when we when when they release uh, GDP data, it's normally for the previous quarter, and so because there's a lot of data that they have to analyze, so you typically get um, the first quarter data in the um, well quarter on quarter uh, in the second quarter. So then you normally get the third quarter data in um, sorry the second quarter data in the third quarter. So I'll repeat that again. You get the first quarter data. For the in in the second quarter and you get the second quarter data in the third quarter yeah uh and so yeah so industrial production and retail uh, sales figures are both up uh for february following a rise in january they were uh, uh sorry they were up only moderately though and given the volatile numbers uh, these numbers are February data will be key to determining whether we will see a quarterly growth for uh, the most timely consumption and production figures. And so um, that's the those are the really the main um, uh, upcoming events also as well. Sorry, meant to go to here uh, on the economics calendar. And uh, we do have uh, it was uh, I would add to that as well would be employment, uh, unemployment rate for Australia on Thursday the 13th, as well as GDP month on month as well for the UK um, will be definitely worth uh, watching and potentially market moving. Um, and so with that being said, moving on to the uh, US dollar, in fact, not gold, the dollar, right? So as we heard uh, from ING, and they're just one bank that we uh, that we look at, um, they expect really the the Federal Reserve to probably hike, you know, one more time and then start to uh, pause and potentially actually uh, cut rates towards the end of the year. And so, um, for me, my bias is to continue to uh, to still short the uh, dollar on pullbacks right and this is just the dollar index so a measure of dollar strength um, against the basket of currencies and so because my bias is for short trades I'm really looking at just supply zones and uh, confluences within those supply zones uh, one of the supply zones I do like is in here and also as well it has um, the added confluence of um, at the top end of that zone I think yeah top end of that zone has the added confluence 
of uh, some major support and resistance. So you know that prices have been traded in and around these zones here. And so if we do get any kind of pullback to this zone, to the top end of that supply zone, I do think that that's nice. Um, also as well, you can use intraday uh, support and resistance wherever you want to use them. Um, but I'm not gonna get into that. It's probably just more looking at the overall uh, bias. And so that's really where my bias is in terms of um, uh, looking at any kind of dollar confluences for a sell, right? Um, so yeah, Fed rates, um, hiking rates soon to pause. And so, uh, yeah, let's go on to the, um, actually, matter of fact, before I go on to the, uh, the dollar yen, um, there was this article, Summers says recession probabilities rising, right? And so it's not just ING that's uh, saying this, you know, um, Larry Summers, um, who is the former treasury chief, very smart man, uh, you know, says that the probability of a recession is rising. So the Fed nearing uh, the end of their hiking cycle. So former Treasury Secretary Lawrence Summers said that the likelihood of a recession is rising after a series of weak economic indicators and uh, that the Federal Reserve is approaching the end of its series of interest rate hikes. And he says, what's pretty clear is that we're in the very late innings of the current tightening cycle. Summers said on Bloomberg's um, television's Wall Street Week with David uh, Weston, whether that's going to be another move uh, necessary, another move necessary or not, I think that's a judgment they should be holding off until the very last kind of moment. He said of Fed policymakers whose next decision comes May the third. So Summers discounted uh, Friday's March job report, which he said reflected the strength of the economy early in the first quarter, but is now less relevant. Is is now less relevant given prospects of a tightening in credit. The data showed another firm gain for US payrolls with the unemployment rate dipping to 3.5. But by contrast, weaker than expected purchasing manager surveys for manufacturing and services uh, released this week showed a bigger slowdown in activity than expected. The ISM's factory gauge hit the lowest level since spring of 2020. Other data this week showed a slide in job openings and an increase in the trend for jobless claims. So there's definitely cracks, you know, in the economy. And so again, that just kind of backs up if the, obviously the data has to support the narrative, of course. This isn't a, a foregone conclusion that it's definitely going to, um, you know, go into a recession. We just have to understand that um, you know, things move and tend to move in cycles. And if the cycle and forecasts are correct, then, um, you know, we can kind of forecast what may happen or the smartest minds do. And we just ride on the coattails. Right. So, um, you know, that's really, you know, where we are from a, from a dollar perspective. So going to the dollar yen, um, this was last week's analysis, uh, was saying that I did want to be a buyer of the, or I was in this, uh, trade in fact, and I did get stopped out for, uh, just a little bit better than break even but um uh yeah i wanted to get back in back in this trade and i actually missed my opportunity uh, as i was actually um doing some uh, some some analysis and by the time i looked back i kind of missed the the entry but it doesn't matter anyway because there's always going to be an opportunity to get back inside this so i missed out on that trade that which actually which was actually a profitable trade but um if prices do actually come back to these zones here i do think that that uh, for me is going to be a sell. I do like a sell or buy on the uh, Japanese yen over the dollar as uh, the end of yield curve control potentially may happen between any time now and June. But again, the data has to support that narrative. And if inflation in Japan keeps going higher, then, um, then that puts pressure on the Bank of Japan and the new governor to want to uh, end um, yield curve control and monetary po current monetary policy and change it, which then means uh, a stronger yen. And so, um, yeah, so the Fed soon to uh, uh, pause their rates and the Bank of Japan holding rates, possible yield curve adjustment 
and actually you know forecasts are saying that potentially we could head back down to the one two sevens at some point uh, but who knows in the sh in the short term what may happen just short term trading is more to do with um, just positioning um, for the medium to long term so that's where my bias is if you do want to be a buyer of the dollar though you know you've got that demand zone right there um, and yeah decent or actually probably any, any time now so any pull back into that zone and then a move to the upside if you feel you want to be a buyer of the yen over sorry the dollar over the yen dollar swiss um swiss franc um you know increasing in strength probably due to some dollar weakness and um probably maybe a bit of risk of sentiment as well um so at the moment that level has broken so i think the next really zone down if we're looking at zones is going to be all the way back from august the 31st now i'm not a fan of trading um you know uh, supply and demand zones old quite you know old demand zones unless you actually have a reaction so i'd like to see a reaction from there which it does look like it's reacting it's not really a pair that i'm trading but if i was i'd want to see a reaction from that zone um, and prices really kind of move to the upside and then wait for a pullback so that at least i know that um you know uh, there's there's some demand there but fundamentally i don't really want to be a buyer of dollar um and i'm not being a buyer really of the uh swiss franc at the moment um of course um, and I say not a buyer of Swiss franc, I mean uh, not against the dollar, but there are pairs uh, that um, there's a pair that I'm interested in potentially buying the Swiss franc um, against, but uh, that's beyond the scope of this uh, video. So, um, in a risk off environment, of course, as well, right? And so, um, yeah, I think any pullbacks, if you're looking to buy the Swiss franc, you're looking at that area of supply right there. And then any uh, any move back inside that zone there would be a decent uh, selling opportunity on this pair. Uh, dollar CAD, dollar CAD again. Um, uh, with oil, uh, you know, this week at the beginning of the week, pretty much, um, you know, surprising to everybody um, and Canada being supported by that. Uh, we didn't have you know that that level just didn't you know hold or was less likely to hold but we've come down to a zone which ultimately again didn't really hold although uh, we did get a bit of a reversal or pullback in 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 this zone here so uh for now you i guess you can kind of say that there is a bit of demand in this in this area not that i would necessarily draw demand like that but um there's definitely demand there and um, if you do want to be a buyer of the US dollar, then um, that's really where you're looking to probably look to buy first, right? Not the strongest area of demand. I'd probably if I was looking to buy the US dollar, it might be somewhere down at these uh, these lows here. But um, yeah, if you want to be a buyer of the uh, Canadian dollar, then unfortunately there's a long way to go, which is pretty much all the way up at these highs from a supply and demand perspective um, or you'd have to really wait for price to maybe make a new low like this for example wait for a pullback into a supply zone and then wait for and then look for a uh, short trade around there so uh, again the Bank of Canada looking to pause rates in fact sort of so you would think in the short term that the um, the uh, the US dollar should 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 at least want to hold its own against the uh, Bank of Canada in terms of interest rate differentials but um, it really depends on uh, how aggressive the market is pricing in rate cuts in the future so uh, there's that the New Zealand dollar uh, very uh, interesting pair and um, so we you know prices did come up actually to this supply zone um, right ahead of the um, the RBNZ meeting and so uh, the Kiwi jumps after RBNZ delivers surprise half point rate hike and so the central bank says inflation is still too high and persistent and doesn't want borrowing cost costs led lower by wholesale rates and so yep they definitely surprised the market by raising raising interest rates by 50 basis points maintaining its pace of tightening to tame inflation even as the economy heads towards a recession and the currency jumped in the short term but 
as we see uh, later on, prices actually had come down. Now, I've made a video as to um, the explanations as to you know why uh, that can happen, right? Why good news but bad price? Forex fundamental analysis explained. And so um, it's definitely worth watching this video, but is the New Zealand dollar still a buy even though prices have pulled back? I think so, because, um, well, in the I would say more in the context of um, understanding risk, less risk on, right? I'm sorry, less risk off, risk off. Let me get my words out, less risk off. So if, um, let's say for example, China, uh, you know, start to grow and, um, you know, global uh, GDP is seen as growing as well, then that benefits the New Zealand dollar. And in fact, there's a lot of forecasts that state that, um, the New Zealand dollar should appreciate eventually against the dollar as the dollar starts to end its cycle and potentially actually go into um, its its uh, cutting cycle towards the second half of the year. So um, maybe, in fact, this area, this price, the 60, 0 0.6247, isn't, might not be the best area to look for buy trades, but if prices do come down to the 61s, right, that in fact it could be a really nice uh, potential buy in anticipation of the federal reserve looking to cut rates into uh, the second half of the year because we're already like in april at the moment oh in april at the moment let me turn that off right so um pound dollar pound dollar so the pound um again uh, last week we were looking at um, you know, this analysis looking at a potential pullback into a demand zone before going higher. Of course, prices really didn't pull back. The strength of the, the, the pound at the moment um, is a lot. <laughs> um, it's really outperforming. And so uh, the Bank of England uh, says business inflation expectations eased slightly in March. So prices look uh, outlook stabilizing as firms predict one more rate rise. And so business uncertainty improving and BOE's March DMP survey finds. And so, um, yeah, the, the, the UK economy has surprised everybody. It's re it really has. And so um, it was expected to actually be one of the worst um, uh, economies in the uh, G10, and it just it's totally reversed its, uh, its fortunes. And, um, and so I think any pullbacks into um, the... Uh, in, into this demand zone is a demand zone in fact that supply zone has been taken out but it's demand zone right here but i would prefer if prices came back down to where you have uh, the confluence really of uh, some support there and uh, the moving fair value and so if i see prices come down to this uh, one two twos or one two threes somewhere around here one two threes yep around that area then that's probably for me again not financial advice uh, i'll be looking for a potential buy in there or if it comes down a bit deeper i think that's going to be quite nice as well for a uh, a buy a buy trade um euro dollar euro dollar um, again, ECB aren't looking at being probably the most aggressive and when they are um, the most aggressive central bank in terms of hiking rates, um, you know, looking for getting a pullback might not be uh, come soon, but hopefully it does. Again, we're just making these higher highs and higher lows. And so, again, from a chart perspective, it doesn't look pretty when you're drawing uh, demand zones. It really doesn't. In fact, all of this is like demand as well. But again, uh, one of the things you can do, and one of the things that we do is just add support and resistance. It's not the only thing we do to look for, uh, you know, the, the, the best areas of uh, support and resistance and supply and demand. But um, it's just one of the things that can help you out in differentiating within that zone where prices may likely to, um, uh, to bounce from, right? And so with that being said, I think the... Um, yeah, uh, any pullbacks on the uh, euro dollar are decent. I think probably a deeper pullback into, you know, this 107s, I think is probably um, the cheaper, the cheaper of the, of the zones. I think that probably like fair value between this high and this low, right? So if we take that high, that low, 
and um, look at where the auction is. Yeah, so I think the 107.50s are going to be a nice fair value. Let me just see if prices have already pulled back to fair value. Yeah, they pulled back to fair value after that move there. So um, they could do right here as well, down to that uh, 107s and down into that um, yeah 107.20s. So I think that area there is going to be quite nice but the first area maybe is to start to look for for me anyway to start to look for any kind of trades around that 108 um, area so uh, yeah that's where we are uh, fundamentally you've got uh, the ECB certainly isn't done with interest rate hikes not says and hasn't yet made up mind if 25 or 50 basis points will be needed in May so that's where is the I think there's obviously the Federal, Federal Reserve are looking at hiking by 25 points basis points max whereas the um the ecb are looking at 25 or 50 so you can see how you know hawkish they are in terms of uh hiking rates and the possibilities whether they do or they don't is a is a different thing but the, the fact that they're talking about it is very hawkish and so for me i'm gonna stay uh my bias is going to stay for any kind of long trades on pullbacks on that one um Aussie dollar and the Australian dollar. Um, again, they hiked rates. Um, sorry, they held rates this week. Actually, held rates, and so um, the uh, but they would had a kind of like a hawkish hold, a bit of a hawkish hold. And so the RBA's low says pause doesn't imply rate hikes are over. So low says board expects further tightening may well be needed, and I'll be prepared for slightly slower return of inflation to target. So there there are some. Um, I guess uh, some counter arguments to them hiking, but um, if he's leaving the door open for more hikes if inflation doesn't come down um, or if it stays sticky. And so um, this potentially could be a decent buy. Any pullbacks to the 66 levels, uh, uh, 66 cent level or just below that are going to be decent buying opportunities uh, for the Australian dollar, especially with the. Um, with the prospect of China reopening, so let's see uh, what what happens with with that. Uh, again, buying the U.S. dollar if you want to be a buyer of the U.S. dollar, then you do have a supply zone. I think that one's gone, and so the one further up uh, hasn't quite reached that. So you probably want to see prices, uh, you know, come up to around the zero point six eight. 68 cent area before looking at uh, going short so that's the first level that you really want to look for the second one would be up by the 69s but um if i had to have a bias on this over the medium to long term it's going to be on the australian dollar and finally gold and gold uh again looking for a pullback if you're shorting that dollar then you know um you're trying to go long on gold right and uh, looking for a pullback into demand fortunately it didn't happen but it does create higher highs and so with higher highs being created uh demand zones are created right so with all that area there being demand and in fact that area of supply which was from way back in 20, April 2022, a year ago. Um, really, I think the uh, the nearest area of supply is going to be way back here. So we're into it, in, in fact, anyways, into that high. So if you do want to get short on, the, 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 uh, on gold, then um, pretty much any time from now. But I think the path of this resistance is to the downside. I think this now starts to, every time it goes higher, um, you know, prices look cheaper down here. So um, obviously, the goal is to buy for a uh, cheaper price. You don't you don't want to necessarily buy at highs or sell at lows. So um, so yeah, that's pretty much where we are. Any kind of pullbacks into that zone, and in fact, again, it's created a nice area of uh, support and resistance within that zone. So that's a little bit of added uh, confluence in terms of the. Uh, uh, the technicals and so yeah i think that's pretty much it do we have some news yep i thought i had some uh, some news uh, so china expands the gold reserves at central bank for fifth month and so holdings at people's bank of uh, people's bank rise to more than 2 
thousand tons and precious metals hit its highest in more than um, a year this week and so you know china's boosted its gold reserves for the fifth straight month extending efforts by the world's central banks to boost their holdings of the precious metal so you know central banks aren't just going to buy gold for you know for no reason because they're looking at price no they're they're the entities that are driving price right uh, contributing to driving price so they're getting in early and so if they're continuing to buy right that makes all the sense in the world from a fundamental perspective from a price perspective obviously you know you don't want to buy at the highs you want to buy on pullbacks just because prices pull back doesn't mean that the chinese government um and chinese people's bank of china is selling gold it doesn't it doesn't mean that at all um if they're buying they're buying to hold right they're not but they're not buying to sell they they tend to look you know years into the future to to do their buying right and so because they're buying in such large quantities um, they're not trading gold in terms of, you know, just buying here and selling here. You know, they're, when they're buying to store, there's a lot that goes into storing gold and, you know, trying to store 2,000 tons just to, you know, next week try to get rid of it all. That doesn't make any sense. So price, yeah, is not, you know, always reflected as value and the value isn't always reflected in price. And so any kind of pullbacks in um, in gold, I think are going to be nice buying opportunities, especially if it can pull back down to this 1940 area. And even better and even cheaper would be um, obviously the 1910s um, as banks again continue to uh, buy gold, right? So that's it for this week. I uh, hope you had a uh, great trading week last week and I hope you have a great trading week this week. I want to welcome all the new members as well to the Discord group. A warm welcome to you all if you do want to um, join the Discord group. Unfortunately, we're closed until the next uh, enrollment. And so um, hopefully I, you know, I can work with you then. Um, don't know when it might be. It might be maybe July, August, who knows. But um, yeah, I'll focus on the guys that are in the group and get them up to uh, speed and hopefully uh, turn them into some profitable traders, which you can also watch a couple of, a few interviews that I've done recently with traders on the YouTube channel. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add one of the interviews now to the end of this video. And, um, you know, they'll basically talk about um, their experience with me in trading 180 and the mentoring and uh, you know there's um, some others as well that I've released on my YouTube channel so um, for the uh, guys that do want to join I will uh, probably have to you know open up again maybe in July August times and so um, but I'll keep you updated uh, in an email or on this channel so guys take care um, all the best speak soon and uh, have a great trading week um I think I've got the record of the straight losses, 48 straight losses. <laughs> 48, <laughs> I remember you saying, yeah, 48. I, th I, I think I've got that record. I don't I'm trying to hear someone to break that record. I don't think no one's broken I that thought, record. I thought mine was bad. I thought, because I had uh, one point, when was it? It was when I first started, probably maybe about 15 or 16 <laughs> losses in a row. And I know how that felt. So I, I can't imagine even getting to something like 20, <laughs> let alone 40. <laughs> Yes, 48 straight losses. The good thing wow. is that I I um I had no idea what I was doing. I was listening to, I was listening to a couple of um people's um ideas on, on trading. It it just wasn't working out and wow. I was kept on going back. Yeah, it just it wasn't working out. Hi, my name's Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com. And um, in this video, I have Alexandros, who is a Trading 180 member. Um, been with me for a while, haven't you, Alexandros? How long have you been in the group? Yes, um, over a year, um, oh. January 12th from 2022. 22, and you're a lifetime yeah. member, aren't you? Yes, 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 yes. 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 Every, and um, every... Yeah, um, I thought I would uh, ask Alexandros uh, for an interview because I know he's been doing, you know, quite well uh, trading 180 and um, we have a really good community and um, he is a valuable member of uh, the trading 180 community and, uh, you know, I value um, uh, Alexandros's opinion, analysis, we're always learning from each other, right, and um it's uh it's great to have you on the call, Alexandra. So welcome. 
Thank you, Leon. Yeah, brilliant. So, uh, Alexandros, um, uh, tell me about uh, how you actually got into trading in the first trading. Place. Yeah. Um, I'll just give a quick, brief uh, history about myself mm -hmm. um, on how um, I, I ended up getting into trading. Um, mm -hmm. um, I worked um, from the age of 14 as a refrigeration technician. Mm -hmm. um, um, and over the past few years, um, my body is was getting tired on me. I'm almost fifty, wow. so it's it's a matter age where um, I am still going to continue working as 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 in in, in my trade. Mm -hmm. um, but I just needed something new in my life, and I needed I needed something um, to just sort of um, um, change something that to have something that more like a better income. Yeah. And um and I found um trading. Um he actually actually came to me on a, on a site, it was an advertising site somewhere on, on the internet. And I just thought, you know, um money online, something like that. Yeah. A lot of people sort of fall into this. Yeah, we all do, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. As I'm getting also maybe like as I'm approaching my my um pension years. Yeah, I could sort of start from now getting ready towards those years and sort of have a more easy life as I go up to service calls. Sort of mm -hmm. take it easier and Absolutely. have a and have a backup, more relaxed type of um, income. Yeah, yeah, that's that's how I sort of got started into into trade uh, into trading. Oh, yeah. brilliant! So before you met me, how long were you trading for? About a year, roughly, even okay. a bit more. Um, I was doing a lot of. I was trying to do a lot of reading. Right. Um, the hard thing was because I'm. Um, I consider myself very uneducated. I I uh, finished high school. Um, basically, high school to me was more of a more of a. It wasn't my strongest point. Okay. Mathematics always was. Okay. I was it's my only strongest point and classic woodwork, metalwork. Right. Working with my hands. Right. Yeah. Yeah, excellent, excellent. My, my strongest points, yeah, okay. and yep, yeah. and that's that's what um sort of um helped me, um sort of I try to sort of get into trade into into, into that that um okay so, those, yeah yeah so you were trading for a year before you met me so that's you're still it was still fairly uh like a baby in the trading world uh you know still, still quite young yeah in the trade yes. in trading years you know yes. what I mean? before you met me so how did you uh how did you find trading one eighty Wow. <laughs> um, this is this is what, what clicked to me. Um, I was going through a lot of uh, videos on, online, YouTube videos. And um, what stood you out was, um, even to this day, like I still um, think about that video. Um, because like I'm uneducated, especially with terms, um, the terminology seems very, very difficult for me to, to understand. Um, it's the way you were teaching. You were, you showed a video of you teaching someone, and that. And when I saw that, I saw how you approached the student. Right. I thought, I thought that was that was like to me. I said, this person's good. Like the way he's approaching him, he's coming down to his level. He's explaining to him. That just I said, I, I want this guy. Like this guy. That's what sort of want me to sort of come into and see what's Leon all about and 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 um he sounds good he sounds what I want like like someone that that's ready to go into an environment where where there's people with a lot of knowledge I'll be competing against and yeah. trying to understand from people that understand a lot and you had those basics that sort of really um helped that person that you were teaching um right. I think I think it was a video with a lot I'm not sure if it was Okay. It was a couple of years ago, but it was right. around the lockdown period. Okay. Maybe it's okay. Quite a bit after, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Right. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Because, you know, with, with things like fundamental analysis, especially fundamental analysis, it, there, as you say, there is a lot of um, uh, uh, terminology and you can kind of go into a lot of tangents, right? We know it's a, it's a, it's a vast subject and ultimately, um, you know how I found my success in 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 understanding fundamental analysis is to try just to simplify things, right? Get things as simple as possible, and um, and I found that, and I have to shout out my mentor, right? Who's uh, Mark Chapman? He he did that for me, 
And so, um, and I know what happened, you know, to me in my life. So I would want to give back to, you know, other traders. And so uh, the way that he broke things down is the way that I kind of do the same thing for, uh, for everyone that, you know, I, I, I mentor. And uh, I guess a question I would ask you would be, um, you know, obviously on, on uh, everyone goes through this. I went through this where you watch hundreds and hundreds of videos, right, on YouTube. And you're thinking, um, you know, which strategy should I use? Should I take this bits from here, bits from there, et cetera, et cetera. But at some point, um, you have to put the um, what you learn in practice, right? Now, many traders tend to just i guess get lost in the wilderness in terms of just that video youtube tiktok um arena how would you describe i guess the difference between just watching videos and trying to learn that way from actually being mentored by somebody and real mentorship not just being in a room with a thousand traders and you know what i mean and and you know we're in a chat room and it's just confusion and anarchy where it's actual mentoring where the we wait where you where i respond to your questions i speak to you on a weekly basis etc what's the the difference between the two this i'll answer with 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 one with one basic outcome my outcome and I say this, and I say it, and I have mentioned this 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 to a couple of traders in our group. Um, I think I've got the record of the straight losses, 48 straight losses. <laughs> 48, <laughs> I remember you saying, yeah, 48. I, I, I think I've got that record. I don't th- I'm trying to hear someone to break that record. I don't think no one's broken I that thought, record. I thought mine was bad. I thought, because I had uh, one point, when was it? It was when I first started, probably maybe about 15 or 16 <laughs> losses in a row. And I know how that felt. So I, I can't imagine even getting to something like 20, <laughs> let alone 40. Yes, 48 straight losses. The good thing wow. is that I... I um, I had no idea what I was doing. I was listening. To, I was listening to a couple of um, people's um, ideas on on trading, and it just wasn't working out. And right. I was kept on going back. Yeah, it just it wasn't working out. Crazy. But but the good thing is what it's it's um, it, coming to terms with it and having one thing I always had is is knowing how to keep a low risk man like keeping my risk management. That's that's comes from a different part of character. So yeah. it's yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's sure. kept that's that thing's kept me in the game. That thing that yeah. Okay, so the difference between maybe learning from video and being mentored, um, you would say is what specifically like you know the gap between the two. So yeah. what? Yes. So for example, you know what what is it that yes. would, that you would say is putting, is putting when you when you put fundament for learning the fundamentals. Basically, understanding um, when when we, we we do we do forex, and when we're doing forex, we have to come to understand what how banks think, move, um, markets, what they're thinking, if they what, how they're moving, if they're agreeing, if they're not agreeing, is there a divergence? Is there not a divergence? Um, and getting all that information. Um, even the slightest little term can turn markets completely around. Mm-hmm. Putting all that on a chart, um, coming to a point where you know that looking at in the looking at a couple of weeks ago, what's been happening fundamentally at that point, mm-hmm. how prices auctioned at a certain area, creating as I'm saying, if if something's developing, you're mm-hmm. understanding. It's development mm-hmm. and um, taking advantage of that specific point because you know that fundamentally um, markets agree or don't agree and it will create uh, a divergence or some type of movement because you have put that on a chart and it's kept on it's kept on it's kept us in in formative mm-hmm. to move in that direction. I know my terminology. I don't have great terms, but. Whatever I, I've I know, learned yeah. this past year, it's been because of I've been reading for you from from the group and you and, and trading one in like it's helped me develop more into my my terms. Brilliant. So yep. so under so understand so mentoring has I guess helped you get a bit more feedback. Um, you know, in terms of clarifying maybe your thoughts, yes. things like um, you know, asking for guidance because trading can be a very lonely, or it is a very lonely endeavor, right? And so you're you're kind of in your own head, 
aren't you? A lot of the time you're thinking, oh, and it's great that you can kind of maybe bounce off of other traders in the group, et cetera, right? Whereas if you're just watching videos. It's, it's if it wasn't for the group, like it's the mentorship, how each week you come, you speak with us, you answer our questions. And then there's the group, Ken Spence. They, they, these guys are unbelievable. They're like, they, they I, how many times I take off my hat for Ken? He's he's always Ken. Every time yeah, I say salute, something, salute to Ken. Yes, you know, Ken. He knows I love him. He knows. And everyone, and everyone in the group, you know, Spencer, yes. Lawrence. Yes. you know what I mean. Everyone, Everybody, Lawrence. Yeah. Yes, yeah. they they. Um, Mark, every time Mark I, Bradley. yes, yeah. yeah every time that, lots, there's yeah. something there that 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 I I um, have an idea on. Um, I always express my opinion. I yeah. know I might be wrong. I might be right. This is the beautiful thing about trading by needy that 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 it's a group that people either agree or disagree. Mm. We we can we, we can disagree, which is very yeah. hard to find in a community. That when you when you're disagreeing with people, um, there, there tends to be a, a misunderstanding, which I've seen in another type of community. But this is the group that that that. Things go really nice. Like even mm. people can understand and disagree and on good terms. Mm. You know, there's no. It's it's everybody in the group. Um, um, tends to sort of it blends out nicely. It blends out yeah. nicely. Yeah, and um, it's it's interesting that you say that, right? In terms of uh, people can have different views. Typically, we have the same views, right? Yes. But there are times where I remember one time. I think it was when. Um, when I think I must have been short on the euro, I think Ken was long on the euro. Yes. Right? And so, yes. Um, you I know, remember this does, chat. Yeah, yes. it doesn't. <laughs> it, it's it's not it's not it's not personal. It's it's no. I have my you know idea. He has his trade ideas, and I think Spencer might have been um, maybe uh, against me um, at one point, maybe on a pound or something like that. But at the end of the day, it's really about learning from myself, but also as well enhancing you know your skills and, because. You know, I'm, I'm always of the case of teach a man to fish or catch a man to fish and he eats for a day, teach a man to fish and he eats for a lifetime, right? That's yes, the whole is. point. And so if suddenly, you know, the worst was to happen, if I stopped trading 180 or I just disappeared, I would never dis just disappear. But if anything was to happen, no, don't disappear. you guys have got the skills <laughs> and the knowledge and the resources yes. to yes. make your own decisions and for better or for worse, you know, continue trading, you know, profitably and successfully, right? Exactly like that. Yeah. It's, it's, it's exactly Excellent. Like that. So, so how does fun? How did fundamentals? Because we we use fundamentals and technicals, but yep. specifically we're more fundamentally driven, right? Yep, yep. Um, what is it about fundamental analysis um, that really kind of helps with your technicals? Putting it on a chart, um, um, and knowing and knowing and not, I'm not going to say looking into like unknown where it's going to know because nobody knows what direction the market's going to go that's that's 100 sure but understanding that um and the way how it's going to lead into that direction because mm. as soon as we know that or as soon as we can sense by certain data um that a certain number may come out a certain reading may came out we know where it, it can affect um which actually we by looking at a chart and putting that on a chart and saying yes i could see this this is this is an opportunity it's come down to a value area yeah. i can take advantage of the, of this because my fundamentals are telling me strongly it can go into into this direction yeah um it, it's 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 always putting it on a chart and putting it together like when i look at a chart i don't I don't see candlesticks and, and patterns in price. I see what's been happening fundamentally. Like I think you've seen once or twice my charts, you see little notes yeah, yeah. hanging. Yeah. You know, it's 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 all notes to keep to remind me sort of, of what's course. been happening here, what's been happening there. Why did the Bank of Japan uh, do this? Why did the Bank of Italy do this or the Fed do this? And we can sort of as we're putting that together and understanding and 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 every time, like we speak about it in the group, bang, there's an idea. Bang, there's an idea. Let's go for yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, you know, looking at uh, price charts to kind of determine a direction is very a difficult thing to do, right? I mean, in terms of in terms of, if, I mean, and I always say this, right? If I could trade without fundamentals, it would be fantastic, 
right? If you know, it would be brilliant because it would it save me a lot of uh, I wouldn't say fundamentals a headache, but you know, the the fundamental side of things you wouldn't necessarily need to kind of look at the banks and do what they're doing. But you know, how can you how can you kind of ignore that and choose to ignore how you know why prices really move, right? Which is basically yeah. the fundamental side of things. And if you know that, for example, a central bank is hiking rates and another one is holding rates, then, I mean, look at, for example, you know, a really good trade. We were talking about it earlier today in the, in the, uh, in the members group was a uh, Euro CAD, right? Look how many people were on that Not Euro CAD trade, yes. you know, and it was, you know, really obvious. Not everything's going to be as obvious as that, but or going to work out like that. But when it does work out, it's just, you know, it's, it's brilliant. It's, it's, it's almost like clockwork. It has to work out like that. Right. Because we understand the fundamentals. Um, so, so, so fundamental analysis helps with your, I guess your directional technical analysis bias, right? Because yes. you can either buy at support, sell at resistance, um, buy at dem uh, demand, sell at supply, but which way is, are you going to, you know, you, are you planning to trade is the, is the question, right? And fundamentals, I guess, you know helps helps with that Help, great helps us give us our, 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 our direction our clear direction on on how the how the market like even by understanding you know what's happening we can understand the auction is uh, the market's coming into an auction for a certain period of time because the market's still not ready to move yeah. you're still feeling insecure yeah yeah, yeah it's, 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 it. it's yeah really, brilliant yes. so so what were some of the uh light bulb moments you know that you've had since joining Trading 180, because there's always there's always that <laughs> aha moment. I used to get them all the time with Mark. Just, just, it just like, pff, pff, it's, just you know what I mean. It'd be like moments. When I first came into Trading 180, one one of the best things I remember when Ken and and that mentioned to me when I was a beginning, you know, was told me Alex, the best thing you can do as a beginner stop trading for a while, do that course, keep away from those old habits. And you you also mentioned this this in your in your um in the course mm -hmm. and um which is basically the first thing I did. Now I'll get to the light bulb. This is how it all basically started. Mm -hmm. And um one of the first things I did do and I and as I was going through as a as I was actually trading MUFGs, what they were coming out with, mm -hmm. I was doing what they were saying, you know. Right. Putting those big gaps, those big this, like long term. Yeah. How bankers well, think. How yeah. I was trying to adapt there. That's where I got a lot of my reading from and my and trying to follow their 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 way. And these are bankers, like you said, these are the smartest guys in the room. Like, yeah. like these guys, you know. Mm. And as time was developing, like imagine like this was eight months into 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 the group, and I was trying to think for myself and 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 one of my my trades that sort of come um, i thought of okay this is an opportunity now was the um in december mm. when uh when the first bank of japan came out with that with that yield curve control yeah and as that was developing um my first idea like when my clearly my on my own and i and i was um as we were all the rumors were bank of japan um one to um control the yield con the yield, yield yield curve yeah yield curve control and then but there was also positive um uh, it was a positive environment for the dollar for the us dollar mm -hmm. and um basically it was more the positive that was coming out was um how the the US dollar was more like small data, nothing's really serious, but retail traders were pushing the price up, and and it's it wasn't it wasn't really um, a push from a main, you know, um, um, it wasn't the main driver. It wasn't main wasn't driver, a, yes, yeah, it wasn't event, the main yeah. driver. And um, as it reached that point, I said, "This is Bank of Japan," because like because I had my fundamentals on the chart, and I could see my notes and said, "Yes." This is where the yield curve control is. Now they've reached it, and all this time, this up move is it's it's not really serious. It's like this thing's going to mm. come down. Mm. As I'm seeing the how everything was coming, um, and we also had some new, some slightly negative news of 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 the of the US dollar that bang. That's when I jumped in. Right. And that following weekend, 
that's when MFU had you mentioned that 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 clear. I go, oh, wow, how yeah. did I do this? Yeah. This is yeah. my this is my 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 how right. my oh. fundamentals came together. It may right. take it take it, it took time. Yeah. Took time. I'm a I'm I'm like I've said, I'm not I've uh, I'm a slow thinker. I'm not a slow thinker. My Me my too. main Me my too. yeah, my main I love analyzing. It's because like I when I analyze and research, I I get this mostly from my from my work because when I troubleshoot, when I troubleshoot at motherboards and electronic boards, and when you're putting the mathematics down and putting all the how amplif- how amps work, how ohms yeah. work, and voltage, and trying to figure out, it's a whole different process way of thinking. But when you come to the to the to the fundamentals, and through time, I've developed a whole different way of thinking. Mm-hmm. Okay? One of them is patience. I've learned that from you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you gotta be patient, right? I've learned that from patient. you. Yeah. Sit down, take a breather, sit back, open it, see what's happening uh, from yeah. the bigger broad. Yeah, and that's macros, what helped yeah. me. And putting all that together into this light bulb moment. That's that's what that was the result. And I I feel good. It's, yeah. it's I, I you know good. what? I I I know I know that feeling, right? It's yeah. when, as you say, you have an, an idea. And before we, because we read several bank reports, some of them being yep. MUFG, Citibank, et cetera. And it's, you know, you have the the trade idea before you actually read it in the bank analysis. And it's almost like they're just confirming what you think. Yes. And yes. then it's almost like, well, I'm thinking like the bank now. It's when you start developing that, yeah, that, that that's type exactly of thinking. It. You're yes. starting to, that's exactly it, right? And so... Yes. Um, that's a that's a that's a great thing. It, it, I mean, obviously, the banks have vast amount of data. You know, all these complex you know uh, um, uh, models that they use to value currencies, etc. But at the heart of it, it comes down to GDP, interest rates, inflation, yes. risk sentiment. Yes, all in order. I mean, yes, that's exactly it. So, so yes. as long as you know the relationship between those and you master the relationship between those, then you can start to see how the banks really start to, you know, I mean, position themselves. Where that positions, that's, exactly. how I got, that's how I got into the 105 as well, Euro USD. It's, 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 a, um, it was developing, it was happening. And I see, as I was watching price come to that level, I go, this is not an opportunity. Yeah. Take it. Bang. Yeah. Just, you do it once, you can start feeling, and like I said, patience. It does need that patience, as you always say, guys. Take take your time. You would see price will yeah. come to that level at some time. Yeah, remember we were back. waiting. Yes. Remember, I don't know if you see the chart. We were looking yes. at that, right? We were looking at this, and at the yes. time, it took probably around what's that? I would say a, quite a few days. It took a few, yeah, twenty two days, so maybe about yep. about a month of trading, right? Month trading days, right, to kind of come down. And I had done this analysis from, you know, way back here. We were waiting for it to come yes. down, weren't we? Yes. Waiting for it to come down. I mean, I didn't actually even enter this. Imagine that. I did the analysis. I didn't enter it, right? I was waiting for prices to kind of actually stop hunt a bit more down into the 105 round number. And it didn't actually get there. It was a few pips before that. I ended up getting into the Euro CAD anyway. So I was in the cut and, and the Euro, I was in the Euro, um, euro swiss or the euro pound at the time so i didn't want to take on too much euro risk do you know what i mean as i as i say there's only really two euro pairs yeah. but um but you know i know you i think ken daniel you know uh, i think Rishi a of said today quite, yeah quite all interest. ended up buying yes. in and around this area do you know what i mean the 105s and now look at that look at where prices you know are pretty right. much uh for you know three four hundred pips up right and this analysis is we've done based purely off of the fundamentals first 100 percent knowing because how long have 100%. we been how long have we been long on the euro for 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 a while right for a good yep. maybe quarter or so maybe beginning yes. of the year yes you know what i mean and yes. it's just waiting for that pullback being patient yes like you say yeah so light bulb moments um doing the analysis by yourself and then actually reading that analysis and reconfirming it yeah and re- even, and even, even the, the group is inside the group like and and it's the good thing is about when I'm in the group and I'm mentioning the trade and there was at one point I was feeling insecure. I go, should I, and when it reached that high point, I go, should, should I get out? And I, and I put my, my, I showed my, how I bought that. Yeah. 
in the group and Ken goes, hold, just hold. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love it when he does that. Ken, <laughs> Ken told it. me to hold. <laughs> just hold, just hold. Just don't hold, trust me, because yeah. just hold now, yeah. you know, it's just... Yeah. The, I mean, there's trust, a time to take the fundamentals. Yes. Yeah, there's a time to take profits, of course. Do you know what I mean? Yes. And there's a time to take partial profits, etc. And we never, we'll never know, we'll never capture the exact highs and you know, in, in, in the perfect trade, right? You have to be set out your uh, your your I guess your plan first of all. You know, what I mean, know where you want to take profits if it reaches, know when you want to hold, etc. If the fundamentals uh reinforcing, I guess, those ideas as well, you that can give you the um the confidence to hold even more because as you say sometimes you might look at your unrealized profit you know what yeah. i mean and be like oh i want to take profit i want to take profit you oh, it comes it, right? so many times oh wow it comes this is this is yeah psychology you've mentioned you've got a few things when you mentioned inside the course and it's oh they yeah. they sit down you know take a breather look at the picture it's just yeah, psychology yeah. plays a big role. It plays, and I think once I even mentioned, I was a book on, I was in, a, I, I put, I put somewhere in the in the group as well. I think I put it back up again in the group. It's um, um, it's got to do with an economic. It was in a um, psychology, an economic um guy wrote it. Oh, I kept on forgetting. I got the book somewhere inside. Hold on. Normally, yeah, I got it somewhere inside. Okay, no worries. It, it's just all about psychology, and it just right. always mentions how important and it's what you mentioned in the course, mm. and how yeah, how psychology plays a big role. And that's sort of that's number one. That's number one, right? Your trading psychology is number one. Forget your technical strategy and your fundamentals, yep. because if you haven't got your psychology right, then you know it's just not going to work, right? You're just not yep. going to make it work because of your because of your psychology. So 100 percent And um, you know, it's something that we're always improving yep. on. Always. You're never going to get to that point where it's like, oh, I've mastered my psychology. You know, I have the moment, same as you guys, same as everyone. We're all my, my daughter went and got it for me. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> this is the one. Ah, Think, think is it think slow? Yeah, it's, it's from think an fast, economist. And, yes. Thinking fast and slow, right? Yeah. Matt Matt Z sort of I was speaking with him and I was waiting for it to come and I just got this book as well. Right. And this one here as well. And it says it's yeah, it's it's a, it's a great book for, for anyone that wants to get into the psychology of trading. Brilliant. It doesn't speak about trading, but it speaks about this like and it, despite an, an economist writing it, yeah, but he, he gets into depth psychology on why we think the way we think, where we yeah. want to get out of the a yeah, position. and we can adapt those yes. principles. Yes, you know, yes. to uh, to trading. Yeah, that's brilliant. Thanks for the recommendation to uh, to uh, the listeners and the watchers. And uh, finally, just to wrap this up, I guess, um, you know, what recent, I guess, uh, fundamental trade idea uh, are you most proud of? It'll probably be the Euro USD or and the Euro Japan. Euro Japan, because it was my first, that and that and that okay. kept 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 me um sort of um thinking about the whole process the and uh, that developed that helped me develop into the euro sd as well right um um and sort of coming sort of putting the pieces together and now like i'm also i'm also starting to look at one or two pairs like like the one we mentioned with, with the cat early on in the in the, in the group today okay um, and and like i said you know um on the um cat australian the australian cat yeah um, the aussie cat yes it's in, it's in the position right now that 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 i'm um, looking at it thinking about it i've got my negative and positive putting the fundamentals together listen to what the banks are saying what market's priced in now yeah this is it's worth waiting for waiting for tuesday see what will the bank do because there's a divergence here. there's a divergence in that trade yeah, there's a strong divergence there. This is an opportunity. Potential, yeah, yeah, potential for this for 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 at least an, a, a prolonged divergence. If the yes. uh, if the the RBA are, are a bit hawkish, right? Yes, it's an opportunity. That's an opportunity. Yeah. That's a clearly fundamental opportunity there. Yeah, it's just yeah, like um, yeah, as I'm starting to develop this, this this is what makes me feel, you know, yeah, like you say, it's th it's thank you to you. It's 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 ah, there. It's thank just, you, man. It's thank you to you, you and the whole the troll the whole T one eighty community it's, and also as well you've done the work right because ultimately it I comes can... down to wanting wanting yes yeah wanting that's exactly work, work it, ethic right? i think work, exactly. ethic, work ethic plays there, there were more only positive things coming into trading my work ethic which i've had from as a young child and mm -hmm. um and 
And I was thinking about mathematics, which actually didn't really play a big role. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Maybe small bits and pieces. It does help out, but yeah. In yeah, you think you think you think you need to be a maths whiz yes. to trade, right? Yeah. The uh, I mean, maths isn't my strong point either, you know. But um, you you would you would think that you know maths you'd have to be a maths wizard to trade and yes, but it's not. not. It's actually not. Yeah. Yeah, it's not. Um. So talk a little, just a little bit, expand, I guess, on the, we'll go back to the, 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 the dollar yen um, trade. You said you got in around the, where was it that you got in around? Right there. Yes, yes, yes. At the 137s. Yes, right on okay. top. Right on top. I do, I do um, um, use a bit of uh, auto flow too. And so I could see it sort of um, um, as, as prices are moving, right. know, as I know what my fundamental is at that point, like right. on your left where you started in that, on that supply zone, yep. on the tw that's the 22nd of December. That I know that date there because I know... <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah, 20th, the 20th, yeah, I remember 20, you mentioned sorry, the, the 20th, date. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. because I've, I, I know that's a very important date there. That's the date when they first mentioned the yield curve control, which yeah. is one of the um, strongest points. It's a point where we have to keep a lookout for in the future right. when that so i marked that from the past that today they mentioned it it's yeah a very strong fundamental move yeah it's a and, bank divergence so it's what and it's what we said today how a lot of japanese have put out a lot of money they've put a lot of money into out, outside of their own country it's yeah foreign foreign, foreign investments yes, right? foreign yeah. foreign investment mm -hmm. so this is can be a big change in 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 in, in looking into the future so if if and price can be driven back up to that point, retail yeah, traders can push all that price up. They, right. you know, and, and and when price did come back up there, the fundament nothing really changed fundamentally. Mm. Nothing yeah. really changed around there fundamentally. In in February, in February, um, it was that strong non-farm payroll that came out, which sort of yeah did push that uh, the. I think it was the um the, the non-farm payroll came out. Yeah, it was like the five hundred and seventeen thousand yes, number, yes. wasn't it? Yeah, that's a was a very important day to to keep on the calendar. And the other one was uh, um the, the the CPI report. Yeah. Um, those those two sticky and sticky inflation. Yes. Yeah. This this was a, enough confirmation to tell us that okay, um, there's a there is a strong divergence here. Like the Bank of Japan is is, and um in a much more better state. And also the rumors around the Japanese yen, which does help yeah. that the Japanese yen will, um, um, that markets are ready to price in on what the rumors around the Japanese yen. And yeah. when you reach that, that point there, all the fundamentals were leading the Japanese in, in a much more better situation. That's why you can see going straight up, straight down. Yeah. It wasn't holding up there as much yeah. as previous. Because if you look at the previous, level um on around the december level that the, the, the that level mm -hmm. it, all up there was all that time of thinking what the what would the um the bank of japan do how mm -hmm. was the us was the 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 cpi inflation was starting to sort of drop a bit mm -hmm. and compared to this there was no like markets were not reacting on right. on the Compared compared to the other side, like it was a big a big difference in reaction, and right. and the divergence was right there. Yeah, we could. Yeah, it was it was a clear it was a clear divergence. Yeah, excellent. The, the bank was yeah central bank of um of Japan was um yeah yeah so, excellent trade and it didn't and it also helped that um you know there was a bit of a banking crisis as well. Yes, <laughs> right. You know what I mean. Yes. Yeah, the, SBB Bank. Safe Haven. Yeah, Safe, safe Haven, haven. plays as well. You know, came into that yield curve control. There was a lot of uh, uh ticks involved in that and um in terms of uh confluence and so you know because ultimately what are we looking at here? We're saying that the, the the price was a bargain for the yen at this point and it was driven by um potential yield curve control uh rumors right and then when prices came back up to here whoever missed out on their uh on on yes. a trade around here now managed to get involved yeah, in, there. in correct in, you know in in yield curve the control idea around here which now is starting to ramp up as well again as we get closer to april um you know may the june next, 
Nobody knows exactly when timing is always going to be an issue, but ultimately that you got the direction right, which is which is what counts. Yep, correct. Even if you go back onto the December, that was a chance where if, if you don't know if you don't follow follow fundamentals, if you look even before that, behind that, you would see a lot of people would have been going up because going across yes, you see, going across like it's like saying, okay, this is coming close to there's this price action they saying this thing might be going up. Right. Yeah. That's looking only at the technical levels. If you if you're not following the fundamentals, because we're following the fundamentals, we can clearly like come to understand that as soon as yeah. this this information came out to us, we know this price is gonna help us in the future, future wise that it will mm -hmm. give us a clear direction on on which way we're going. So we're looking at this way, say okay, this could be a you know a, a double bottom or uh, yeah. You know, create yeah, going up for a double top, or whichever way you you could you could see see it as a as as a technical. Like, yeah, I I don't even look look at the technical no more. I like like I, <laughs> I, I not I to, not go, to determine not to determine direction anyway. Yes, no, yes. You know yeah, what I mean? Not to determine yeah. the direction. Yeah, funder, I mean the technical is definitely definitely one hundred percent help. But I understand what you're saying in terms of you know traders would have you know who uh, trend traders you know you're looking at. Um, traders probably getting involved in terms of they're seeing the immediate trend to the downside but you know there would have been you know some sort of traders that would have been like thinking okay well that's a level that's a level of demand etc and then probably looking at you know maybe some sort of reversal and all of a sudden it starts to uh it starts to drop away right it starts to drop away and then all of a sudden but the, but this the, what's key is is that fundamentally as to why it moved yes right that's the key and then yes. understanding here, yes, was the yen a bargain against the uh, the dollar? The dollar at that point, right. yes, we fought. that is the key. And then you look for your entries in and around there, and that's what happened. Excellent. Thank you, Alexandros, for the interview. Leon, I really, I really, you, really appreciate, appreciate. I thank you coming across your video. Like it's it's that video that like it's what and it's 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 truly you, you have the patience that that. You explain you. This is this is one. I think God's giving you this gift. Oh, you, thank you. He, he, he has he, he, you because it's the way you explain things to people that you you help them understand. It's your yeah. patience because I can be a real pain when I start. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> when I no, when I don't stop talking. And it, no, and 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 this is a good point, right? It's a good point that you make is because the reason why you are where you are is because you ask the questions, right? In the same way that with with when I was being mentored um, by Mark, um, I would do the same thing as you would do, right? I would ask him questions. I would pick his brain, and he was gracious enough and patient enough um, to to help me to understand. And this is what I think um, you need in trading, right? Because you can yeah. watch a thousand. I watched a thousand videos. I did, you, you know, uh, before before, out before, before meeting Mark, right? I took nothing before, out there. Uh, you know. Uh, tens of indicators that cost tens of thousands of pounds, you know, joined every course, but it was that one-to-one, -one, um, you know, group, the fact that I could call the person, not necessarily can't call me anytime, you know what I mean? But it just, just you can put your questions in the, in the call. I'll get back to you. Um, DM me. I'll, you know, make videos for you, for example, you know, and, you have, yes, you know, and exactly just like that. Can, can exactly continue like to be, that. you know, to continue to support you, you know what I mean? And, and, and all traders. And, um, and yeah, I just want to say thank you for you know for for the interview. Really appreciate it. Thank you, thank you to you for <laughs> helping me get my retirement properly. Uh, <laughs> it's like I fun. own you. I like, and I've always said like, and I'm gonna say I've said to all the people in the community. Yeah. Whenever you guys come to Greece, man, lunch is on me always. And I, I'm uh, waiting for you in Athens. I'm waiting for you to come to Athens. Brilliant, brilliant. I've been to Greece. I've been to Greece. We went to um, went to yes. Malia. I went to Malia. And we went to Halkidiki. Halkidiki. Yeah, Halkidiki. yeah, 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 yeah. Very, very nice out there. Very. I think when I went out there, um, me and my wife, we, um, I think there was a forest fire around there. In 2007. Yeah, saying. it was 2007. Yeah, there was a forest fire. Um, I think we just missed it. We kind of came in afterwards. Yeah. yeah. But we went to like um, a really kind of picturesque place. Um, uh, and it was really, really nice. But, um, but yeah, if I'm ever in Athens, mate, I'm going to give you a call and we're going to link up. Yeah. All Thank right, you, Leo. man. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank and you. Um, is there anything you want to say to maybe the, the listeners who are still listening? 
trust this guy, trust him. It's, 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 I'm, I'm uneducated. I learned, he helped me, put me in a position to understand. If that cannot explain anything, like, I don't know what we, it's, it's just, he truly does help you from my heart. It truly helps. Thank you, man. It puts you in a position that way you will learn. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. And thank you. Thank you again for the interview. And uh, thanks for listening to the listeners. Thank you for listening. And if you do want to join Trading 180, um, uh, go to the Trading 180 website and uh, see if there's um, an enrollment uh, slot. If there's not, then there will be one probably soon because I tend to just, um, uh, I guess, um, have them open every maybe couple of months as it you know keeps the group small, but also focused and concentrated, which I think is better than having it open, uh, you know, all hours and days and people kind of come in and then they get lost in the sea of, you know, maybe people and comments and chats. And, you know, I like to keep the group small. And so, nice. yeah, it's a nice, it's a nice community, great community, helpful community. And uh, thank you to everybody in the community, including you, Alexandros, because I know you help out whenever you can and guide the new traders and uh yeah thank you very much and uh brilliant guys take care thank you speak to you soon yeah bye mate bye all right bye